Hello, good morning. So today I have the CTO of a company called SpeedScale. If you're all about the startup culture and want to grow your uh, career in specific niche skills such as Kubernetes, you might want to apply to this company because they're looking for a lot of people who are specialized in this specific skill. Let's welcome Matthew on 10 Minutes of Hiring Wisdom where he will tell us about where he's currently working, what the company specifically does, and if he has any tips for job seekers out there. Hi, Matthew. How are you doing today? I'm great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Matthew. How's your Friday going so far? What are your plans for the weekend? Uh, my plans for the weekend are to uh, to not have any production outages uh, and and problems with our software or, or our customer software and uh, to to try to uh, try to go to the pool maybe for the first time. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I hope you have a wonderful time on your weekend. But Matthew, let's get into it. Um, so, can you tell us about where you're currently working, what your company specifically does, and how you got introduced to this company in the first place? Sure. So, uh, my company is Speed Scale. Um, we make uh, we make, we're a very small startup. We're a venture capital backed, um, taking about three and a half million dollars. And we make tools that help engineers write software that doesn't break when they send it to production. So when users start using it, uh, we make sure that their software is not going to break. Um, now we, uh, you know, nobody likes getting woken up in the middle of the night and engineers don't like testing their software. And so SpeedScale takes that load off of them by allowing them to replay what real users do in real applications, uh, in a, in a test environment. So it's like kind of a try before you buy with uh, user traffic. So. Okay. And how did you get introduced to the company? Was it like usually with executive positions, it's usually within the network. So how were you introduced to this company specifically? So uh, I'm a co-founder of the company. So I was I, I started the company with two other uh, folks that I had worked with before. We actually went to college together, which is one of the great <laughs> best ways to meet uh, fellow entrepreneurs. I went to college together. We actually did a startup right out of college. And then we went off and I went to Silicon Valley in San Francisco and then uh, they did other jobs and we came back together to start start the company. And I think uh, the passion we had, there's really two two big things that drove us. <clears throat> the first one is that we wanted to work together. We wanted, or at least I wanted to work with them, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> uh, we wanted to work together uh, because, you know, it was really important that we had, had a, a company we could believe in and that we all had a, a stake in. And the second thing was, is there's, there's a problem within what engineers they suffer with, right? There's really no good tools to help them build quality of their software in the newest generation of technology. And so we felt we could really, we could really help with that problem. So Okay, that makes sense. So you met them at college and then you decided to start a startup with them. But what was something that you realized about that, that you were like, okay, these are people that I can specifically start a company with? Like, what were some of the factors that you took into consideration? Yeah, so I've done I've done a lot of different jobs. I've worked at I've been a senior vice president at a big software company, and then now I've been a startup founder and all that. And one of the key things that uh, that really sets successful people apart, right, in in their careers, is a focus on getting things done, and not necessarily in the in the most elegant way. Although that's great <laughs> if they could do that too. Uh, it's not always the most the most clever solution. But uh, it's it's people who really know how to how to achieve a goal that serves a customer. And so my two co-founders, I've known them throughout their careers. And if you need something done, if you need it reliable and dependable, um, they're the people to call. And so that was the thing that I prioritize on most is that they wanted to help customers and they they're going to find a way to do it. So. Okay, that makes sense. I think the getting done attitude is something that's so important at the end of the day, because I think a lot of us take the step of wanting to do something. But usually when it comes to the implementation phase, we're just like, we'd rather not. So I think that part is the hardest and you found people who support that. So I'm glad that you did. And Matthew, um, I'd love to understand. So your company, as in like it's been growing, um, what kind of positions are open? What kind of people are you wanting to join your company? Because I think startups have this tight knit culture mm -hmm. and usually people want specifically certain characteristics to be a part of their company to help it grow. So what kind of people are you wanting to join your company? What kind of positions are open? Can you give a, can you give a little more information on that? Absolutely. So uh, the types of roles we're hiring for right now, uh, we're working a lot on scaling up. Right, so we're looking for uh, we're looking for marketing people. We're looking for uh, SDRs, which are like sales rep representatives, and then we're also look, working looking for front and back end engineers. And so for us, that means front end engineers means people that love to build TypeScript, JavaScript, React, <laughs> and back end engineers like co Kubernetes, as you mentioned before. So that's the, the sort of the te technical answer to the question. Um, we're just looking for all kinds of roles, but. Um, more specifically, the kinds of things that we want are, are people that are passionate about keeping that engineer from waking up in the middle of the night. We're looking for people that are passionate and working a tight knit team, um, one where we, we take care of each other, right? And we're, we're, we're there for each other, we're dependable, but one where we have a lot of accountability. Um, so you mentioned something that I thought was really interesting is that 
uh, you know, people get kind of lost in big ideas, right, as opposed to getting things done. Uh, I think it's understandable, like in college, it's all about passing tests or, you know, following rules or whatever. And startup life is very different. Startup life is about, can you make that thing you see in your head become reality? And it's a different kind of skill set. So we're looking for people that want, want to make that happen. Okay, it's interesting. And um, you specifically mentioned um, that you are looking for certain characteristics and everything, but um, is your company currently hybrid? Is it remote? What exactly is the structure? And for example, if you are open to global hiring, for instance, mm -hmm. how would you ensure that people embody those values, that culture that you're looking for, specifically being thousands of miles away? Because I think when you're in it, close there and when you're interacting with each other on a day-to-day -day basis, you tend to adapt each other's values and everything. But I think when it comes to global hiring, it can be a bit hard. So how do you ensure that standardized system of values, mission, and purpose exists within every employee within the company? So... Um, right now, because of how big we are, we're hiring uh, locally. We need people that are at least semi-local. However, I've managed very large remote teams, and we will we may eventually go to that at speed scales. We get a little bit bigger. Um, the the center of your question, you know, about driving culture is is culture is really the set of decisions you make and the comp and the, the the things you're willing to give up to drive that culture. So yeah, every company says talks about integrity, right? Um, that's great. Integrity is great. That's a great word, right? We all love that word. The question comes down to is, will you uh, pass on making uh, the revenue numbers, right, for a certain time, right? Knowing that it will work out, right, that you have another way, right? Are you willing to walk away from something that doesn't have the integrity that your company, uh, you know, your company demands? So I think that the way you drive integrity is, is through, one is the written communication, you know, and the second thing is by the decisions that you that, that the executives make and, you know, quite visibly to everyone at the company, if they see this is really important, this is at the top of our priority stack, then uh, then they see the decisions being made and they know how how uh, how we expect them to to behave as well. Right. Because we're, we're living that <laughs> example. OK, I like that. So you mentioned you specifically mentioned a lot of large teams and everything. Can you maybe specify what 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 kind of team was it? What was your role within that team and how was that experience generally? Yeah. So uh, I worked at a company called CA, which had uh, we had, I think it, at our peak, I had uh, 22 engineering sites, I think. And so all wow. over the place and, and radically different cultures. Um, we had teams in Prague. We had team like uh, the Czech Republic. We had teams in uh, Utah, we had teams everywhere, right? All these different kinds of people. And so the, I think that the, the kind of, uh, the challenge when you get to that kind of scale, which I look forward to having those problems at speed scale again one day, uh, <laughs> but uh, the, the challenges that you get at those scale are really around uh, driving cohesiveness and, and, and inclusion, right? People feeling included and, and, and as part of the group and not getting like these clicks. So what you'll get is it's like people will say, well, you know, that team over there, they get to make all the decisions. Even if it's not true, it may be true, it may not be. Even if it's not true, they have to, you have to drive that out. And so what we spend a lot of time doing is flying people in and getting them together in big group settings so that they can meet people. Instead of making a villain on the phone, you see a person in, in real life that, you know, you can connect with. The second one was through shared rituals. So um, rituals like, uh, you know, I actually got this from, you know, one of my heroes, which was one of the startups I first worked for, for um, Wiley, Tech, or Wiley Technology, he, uh, we, he, the CEO instituted this policy where they would, we would gong people in and like, like ring a gong and major events. Now we don't do that right at speed scale, but it's those type of rituals that people know it's like, you're important to us because you're part of these, these rituals and, and uh, themes. That sounds fascinating. That sounds fascinating. And I think um, specifically feeling that you belong somewhere in a bigger part of a company is something that's so important because then you realize that, okay, you're, you, what you do matters that you're leaving an impact and if you leave the company for instance you will be missed which is something that's really important and Matthew the last question would be because you've had you worked with a lot of startups you are the co-founder of your own startup now can you maybe if you have any piece of advice for job seekers out there what would it be so my piece of advice is for I guess uh people who are early in their career um uh decide consciously and thoughtfully what team you want to be a part of and so what I mean by that is um, I, uh, the, the co-founder is my current startup. I've been all around the world. I've been hired for different jobs. I've been in all kinds of different things. But the people that I come back to are the people I started my career with. And the reason is, is because we have shared values. We have a shared experience. You know, I, I say it's like being in a band. If you, uh, if, you, if you get in a band and you do electronic dance music, uh, you're going to have a tough time uh, learning how to, how to be a, a shredder on a guitar right? You're going to have to, they're radically different skills and it will shape your entire career. So I guess my one piece of advice is I think a lot of us fall into our first job. We just say, well, Google wanted to hire me. So let's go to Google. Well, Google's awesome. Let's do, but do you want to do Googly things? 
you know, is that, is that the, do you want that sort of more academic culture, right? Or do you want the startup culture, right? And you have to be very thoughtful about it. And I think, um, just remember how, val how valuable, especially in this job market, how valuable you are. And, uh, you know, just be very conscious of, and directed about what team you want to be a part of for the rest of your career, because it starts now. Okay, well, thank you so much, Matt. You, this was, that was a wonderful piece of advice for specifically people who are starting early in their career who have no idea where to go, what to do, and where to start. So thank you so much for sharing that. But other than that, Matthew, our time is up. It was an absolute pleasure having you as a guest, learning so much about you, your experiences, how you led a very big team, and the rituals that were carried out there. I hope your company continues to grow and prosper and you find amazing talent for your company. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.